Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass. I'm your host, Sam, from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. And I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. Yes, you are. Uh, each week we get together, we talk about cars, motorsport, F1, car, what else? Cars? Cars. We cars, talk about cars, cars. We? <laughs> <laughs> You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube.com forward slash Behind the Glass. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And Tony, if people want to support this podcast, what should they do? Watch it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but also head to Patreon. You can support us on patreon.com forward slash behind the glass. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the episode. We have both had pretty exciting weeks. What? The week. Not we, weeks. We, the, the last week, the last few days have been good days for us. We're within the last week, yeah. 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 Okay, very specific on your... Okay, maybe I messed that up. But anyway... <laughs> Do you want me to say why I've had an exciting time? Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll yeah, go yeah. first. I'll go first. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I launched Seen Through Glass Coffee. Uh, which is unbelievable. Like, we're all so proud of you. Like, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Very good. When you say we all, do you mean you and Twiggy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, amazing moment for me. I mean, a bit of a weird one. Maybe people didn't always necessarily see it coming. But something I've been working on really hard in the background for many months, six, nine, maybe even 12 months, who knows. Uh, and it feels kind of cool to finally put it out there. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, it's just so that, like, it's just cool for me. Like, even if no one else buys it or wants to try it. It's just cool that I got my own coffee. <laughs> I, I'm sure they will. We all know what a coffee nut you are. So Coffee um, obsessive these days. Yeah, yeah. Well, not just these days. What? Pretty much since I've known you. Good point. Um, so yes, if you missed the main channel video, uh, yesterday I launched the Seen Through Glass blend of Perla Coffee. So Perla, a company uh, originally based out from the U uh, Florida in the US, um, but now set up a, a hub here in the UK. I've known the UK team for a couple of years now, um, been chatting them back and forth uh, sort of ever since I knew they were coming here. Uh, and we've launched this very unique signature seen through glass blend, which is super exciting. Uh, if you want to check it out, drink Pearl at Coda UK forward slash STG. This is specialty roasted coffee. So it's a little bit more expensive than your supermarket stuff. But if you're someone who's into coffee and you're used to buying specialty roasted coffee from independent cafes or, or roasters, uh, I'm hoping it's kind of competitively priced. Uh, but if you're just buying Lavazza each week, you might find it a bit expensive. How much is a pack? Uh, I think it's eight. Eight, uh, eight eighty-five or something like that for two fifty. How many coffees? Do you That's get a week. Out of it? That's a week. Or oh, two coffees a day. One coffee a day. Uh, one and a half, maybe two. I, I, I can make it stretch for two coffees a day because I make one for Vicky and I each each morning, yep. and, and that's a week. So, so yeah, two coffees a day. Seven days or five days? Seven days. That's, that's, a, that's a full week. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, it depends on how much. This is where we get nerdy about coffee now because <laughs> the amount of obviously ground coffee that you put into your espresso determines flavors and all these different things. Um, but yeah, that should last you a week. At, at which point, if you think about going to a cafe to buy that, those coffees, it's obviously going to be way more than eight quid. So. Of course. Anyway, um, the big thing that I wanted to mention, which I totally forgot to mention in the reveal video, for those of you that have watched it or are interested, one of the coolest things Perla are doing is subscription service. So if you try it and you like it and you go, I want more of this, you can sign up so that they send you new bags every week, every two weeks, whatever it might be. You can choose the sort of, you know, how regular that delivery is. You can pause it if you decide you want to stop and try something different. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, hopefully go out and try it. Hopefully you'll like it. Let me know. And if you do, check out the subscription service. It's so good now, that subscription. You know you know who done that years and years ago? It wasn't really a thing, but the Milkman. The Milkman started all that. The Milkman. 40 odd years ago. And now like, you've got Hello Fresh. They all do it now. Yeah. You just subscribe. It's like, like Netflix for food and coffee. I well, mean, there we go. Brilliant. Brilliant. Go on, go on, Milkman. Sorry, I almost said Postman. <laughs> go on, Milkman. <laughs> um, now, do, do you want to tell people why you've had an exciting few days? <laughs> well, I mean, you can. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm very pleased, but I'm not like that ecstatic for people to know, but like, um, it's me. It's for, it's for my, it's. Sure, well, sh okay. You know what then? Because at the end of the day, we need some privacy in our lives. Yeah. Why don't we just say you bought a new car? Yeah. There, there we go. go. It's uh, a very nice car. Yeah. It's very fast. Yeah. It's blue. Yeah. And, and we can leave it at that for now. Yeah, let's. People will find out more in the future, I'm sure. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to be very cross and say you're on social media. You don't deserve privacy. But, you know, if you want to keep it private, that's up to you, mate. Uh, yeah, I made a decision like just over a year ago now um, to not put my personal cars on social media for various reasons. Um, but, but, yeah, it's my decision. It's your I, decision. I want to enjoy them privately and... Um, yeah, that's well, that. It's been exciting, and you're happy. This is the main thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like obsessed with it. To be fair, 
Super so. cool. Well, you yeah. know, at some point, guys, you may see more of this car. You may hear more about it I'm on sure the main will. channel yeah, on the yeah, podcast, yeah. but we'll leave it at that for now. Yeah, and, very good. And it's just an exciting few days. So uh, we do actually have a little tiny bit of car news to discuss this week. Oh, good. Which is which is a relief because <laughs> last week, if you tuned in, you'll know that we didn't have a lot to talk about. We got through the episode. I think did, I, I yeah. actually really enjoyed that episode. Um, but we do have a tiny bit of car news because Toyota are back with another banging new car. It's not a homologation again. No. That they're not really actually going to make. Forget the GR <laughs> Yaris. Because the GT86's successor is here. Oh, really? Already? And confusingly, it's the GR86. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, wait. I mean, that car is... Oh, it's eight years old now. Yeah. It's oh, been around right. for longer than you think. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. still in conjunction with the Subaru, uh, the, the BRZ, you know, the still twin cars. That? Yes, but that's not coming to Europe. Right. So fair. we're only getting the GR86 here. Right. I'm going to bring up a picture for you because I think you need to see it because I actually think it's super good looking. A bit like a Supra look like? Well, yeah, it's just a, a, an evolution of the previous car. But I think the back's a lot sharper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and this car's always, well, at least, sorry, its predecessor always super popular it's like an affordable rear wheel drive good amount of power manual fun car well actually it, it, it hasn't got enough power to pull skin off a rice pudding but you can that, tune it up well even if you don't it's good enough it's a it's a manual gearbox it's rear wheel drive it's got skinny little tires you can have lots and lots of fun for not really a lot of money um they won't go wrong um we we've, we've had a few in stock and we always sell them like really quickly like you get like a you know a, a a good one like a 2016 2017 car for probably 15 grandish so um yeah if that's what you're looking for it's like perfect and especially if you're like say a beginner like a novice and you want to learn to drift and be stupid that's a really good car to learn because you've got <laughs> if you want to learn to drift. We do not advise <laughs> drifting and being stupid. Yes, we do. <laughs> Slash, yes, we do. But uh, I don't really know where we should sit on that professionally. But anyway, carry on, Tony. Thanks for, thanks for landing us in it once again. <laughs> so, what were you saying? When do we get Boris on? Yeah, no. <laughs> Stop calling for Boris Johnson to come on this podcast. Well, look, actually, stats-wise, it's quite impressive because I know what you mean by the fact that it's, you know, it was sort of underpowered, mm. there, but, but a ton of fun. Mm. Uh, but they've stepped up quite a bit. bit. So the GR86, 232, horsepower uh, and it's 1.1 seconds quicker to 0 to 60. Fair. So they, you know, stepped up quite a bit. Okay. And I'll say, I think it looks much sharper um, but but I've always liked the idea of this, a bit like with the MX-5, being a more attainable, fun to drive yeah. sports car, a little baby sports car. Mm. So uh, I'm all for this. I really want to have a go. It's obviously the, the reason they've changed it to GR rather than GT is part of this branding, the Gazoo Racing branding like Fair. we've seen with GR Yaris and we're going to yeah, see across yeah. the board. A bit like Renault and Alpine. Exactly. And AMG or RS. You M know. And exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think this is another sign of Toyota doing some really good stuff at the moment. Mm. Supra, I know it's all, people are going to start yelling and saying oh, it's all shared platforms, but Supra, this, GR Yaris, what else are they doing? Hilux, new Hilux, you were saying. That's a really good <laughs> car, that. Uh, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit worried about that Supra, you know, because they really struggle to sell them mm. cars and... Uh, you know, the initial hype was really good for them. And um, it is a really good car. Really cool car. Really cool car, although it is a BMW. But um, yeah. But you could say the BMW is a Toyota. Well, no, because it's not, not really, BMW. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to play on the fence there. But Devil's Africa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It didn't work. It didn't work out. For me. So I tried my best. Yeah. Um, but no, but I, I know what you mean. Like it's, I wonder whether in other markets it's done better than here in the UK. American market because they tune them. I'm sure it's done better out there for sure. Yeah, because when I see one here, I'm like, oh, Supra, because yeah, they're quite yeah. rare. Like I go, oh, wow, cool. Um, you can see them coming a mile off as well because of the big that big front and the daytime running lights. So I had a yellow one come towards me the other day and I thought, oh, that's a Supra. You can see it a yeah. mile off. It yeah, looks yeah. cool. It's got yeah, real yeah. road presence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I say, I just, I feel like at the minute Toyota are doing some really good things. We've obviously got the upcoming hypercar for the hypercar endurance series, the Le Mans series, um, and a few other bits and bobs, you know, sort of being whispered about. And I think this GR branding for their sort of, you know, performance stuff makes sense. It helps us differentiate which are the ones that us petrol heads will want. I think, isn't it Toyota that doing some cool stuff with hydrogen fuel cells? Yeah, stuff? yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Hyundai as well. Anyway, I mean, so... I just, I'm positive about Toyota right now. Yeah. I've got a bit of an update for you as well, oh. which I completely forgot about. Oh, God. I was going to message you the other day. 
Do you remember I said that uh, a power mine had one of them AMG One project? Oh yeah, hypercar things. The it's Formula com- One car it, on the it's road. It's coming. Okay. Like like so. Is this co- a exclusive? No, no. So I saw him the other day, and interestingly, they're making two hundred and fifty or two hundred and ninety nine. I can't remember exactly what he said. Okay, more than I thought actually. But go on. Mm, yeah. Um. And the way that they're letting or or allocating them to the owners is they're literally just picking their names out the hat for the cars so he's getting car number six wow so he's getting an early car like lewis hamilton's getting like car 60 something so he's surely getting... caught car 44 hamilton well no no because no, he's he's not been treated any different to a normal punter oh written no yeah, n- uh, well this is what i've been told maybe that maybe they've been saying that to yeah, massage yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say I, can't, I mean if I was Hamilton I'd be like walking out the door at that point <laughs> maybe it's in his contract yeah exactly I want car number 44 um, interesting so that's coming like end of this year early next year they've said and does he know any more about what the internals are going to be now are they still sticking with that Formula 1 engine or is it a heavily sort of dark uh, I, I dark? believe so yeah. but um, yeah that it's what the and there was one point like he said that they was going to give all the deposit back and, and not... Walk away from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I know it got very bad at one point because they couldn't basically make it idle any lower. It was, you know, Formula One engines idle at 12,000 RPM, yeah. something ridiculous. And they just couldn't get it to drop. Um, and, and so as a road car, this wasn't a thing. But Unbelievable engineering. When you think about it, the engine in... It'll be know. so interesting to see what that car could be like. Um, mm. You know, I feel like with the world the way it is, both Valkyrie and Project One have slightly simmered down in recent years. The height, the expectations, maybe because the project is just taking longer to deliver than we mm. first thought. If you think about it, both of those cars have kind of been on our radar now for years. I mean, yeah. three, four, five years. Yeah. And they're still not, you know, delivered. So, but also within that, there have been these little changes and these rumours of, you know, going in different directions. And Project One is one of those ones where I'm just like, what is that going to be? Because a bit like the F50, right? The F50 is not a Ferrari Formula One car on the road. No. But it has a derivative, or basically a Ferrari Formula One engine in it. Yeah. But it's, it's not a Formula One car. No, 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 no. So that's the thing with the Project One. It's going to be mighty impressive, but what's it actually going to be like as a road car? Considering that Mercedes don't really make hypercars. I mean, the last one you would argue is what? CLK GTR? Which mm, was yeah. basically a homologation car? Yeah. You know, you know what, what, what got me thinking? Because this same person I'm talking about, he's got a SF90, just been delivered. And Sounds uh, like a good friend to have. He's got, uh, he's got a piece. He's got a piece to as well. He's okay. got. He's got loads of cars. GT2, he's got all the cars. Yeah, yeah. and um, he was in his SF90 at the weekend. I said, "What's it like?" And he said, "It's like a pista on speed, basically. It's just a, a fast pista." But because then that Valkyrie and that Project One have been in the making four or five years, has that SF90 caught up? I mean, mm, how mm. much faster can it be? You know, you know when you get in a pista like. I mean, you definitely don't want to go any faster than that anyway, but how much faster even can the SF90 be than the, than the P-Star? It's a lot heavier, by the way. Of course, you of know. course. I, I mean, as, as we often say, I think, on this podcast, and I try and reference on the main channel, you know, nowadays, everything does 0 to 60 sub three seconds, right? Yeah. Every supercar have got it. It's all does 0 to 60 sub three yeah. seconds. And on the public roads, you're using 10% of the car's ability. Yeah, you are. Something like a Valkyrie, I don't think in my head I ever envisage driving on the road there will be plenty of them driving on the road and they'll look crazy but surely that car is all about aerodynamics and mm. therefore only really about utilizing on track where you're like going to start to experience that yeah like mm. a center exactly like that, but even more extreme yeah project one i get the feeling might not be that case because it's mercedes i think they will dial in livability factor and i think it will try and be a hypercar for the road rather than for the track unbelievable which is mad but yeah you know <laughs> SF90 is another one. Yeah, you're right, but but it's sort of it's about being more than just a thousand horsepower, or more than being just a quick pista. It's the hybrid nature of it. It's the it's moving Ferrari forward. It's having mm. the latest tech. It's having that kind of level of Ferrari in your yeah. garage. So I think that's where we're getting to. These cars now they can all be as quick as each other, yeah. or or more than we need, but they're differentiated by what their power unit is yeah. or their aerodynamic or on track ability or their mm. road ability. And yeah, it's just 
dividing them up into different areas. Isn't and when it? they when they when they always bring a new car out, you know, people go, "It's faster than this and faster than this," but it is tiny, mate. It's like point one or point two of a second. There's no big jumps anymore like we used to see. They've all got to that point where you know how much faster can you go? And if you know when they do when they do all these, they don't really do naught to sixty times anymore. They do naught to one hundred and twenty four. Yeah, or, yeah, because naught to sixty, you it, can't go any quicker because yeah, of traction. Yeah, it's yeah, laws yeah, of yeah, physics. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like if, you know, if you're if you're doing naught to sixty in two and a half seconds, you know how much faster can you go than that? So they always quote a you naught know, to two hundred kilometers an hour, or uh, you know naught to one hundred and fifty miles an hour. Or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. Do. There's so, always the most impressive yeah. tests. When you see those drag races, when they put a Tesla in, or they mm. put something that's fast accelerating against a hypercar. Wait till they hit 70, 80 miles an hour and the hypercar just flies past or a, or a every normal time. NA, you know, a, a mm. combustion engine. You know, once a combustion engine gets going 80, 90 mile an hour, it leaves electric cars behind, doesn't it's it? Where so, so many of those big, big hitters are very, very impressive. You know, it's mm. that secondary phase. You know, Bentley Continental GT from, yeah. from 60 to 110 miles an hour yeah. is mind-boggling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Project One, great that it's theoretically coming. Sounds a little bit like a four, the 4GT kind of process of apply and we'll just pick with what seems like no real logic. And I suppose it's because Mercedes don't have that history of having a VIP customer list. Well, they've already got their customers for them. They've, you know, that's all been done. So it's for just, years, for years. Yeah. Like, like four years or something, mate. I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly what the deposit was, but I, I know it's half a million quid or something it was. I mean, it was a few quid. But do you give preference to the man who's bought 300 A-classes for his business or the guy who's got an SLR, an SLS GT series, an SLS Black series? You know, how do you... So that's why they picked the number out. That's why they've done it out of a hat, like of a course. draw. Because, you know, how do... It's not like a Ferrari or a Porsche where, uh, you know... You're, you're, it's you're easy to rank them, correct. theoretically. Yeah, or easier. Easier. Yeah. Mad, but yeah, cool. And I'm all for some real crazy cars coming our way. Um, as we keep hyping, you know, this Le Mans hypercar series is going to give us some mad cars for the road. Yeah. But if we're still going to get Valkyrie in some shape or form, we theoretically still have Valhalla coming. God knows what's happened to that, which yeah. was the baby Valkyrie. Yeah, yeah. Project One, the Gordon Murray car. There's lots of big, I'm going to say it, big dick hypercars yeah, coming. Well, they're, they're really waving cars. Yeah, really waving like, cars. Yeah, That's yeah. what I was trying to trying to get to. Yeah. Um, and you know what else, sorry. Go on, no, no, please. You know, you know what else I saw on telly the other day? I nearly fell asleep, by the way. <laughs> please don't be one so, of my videos. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was that coffee video. No. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> it was the, um, that uh, extreme no, thing. No, no. Tony, I, you know what? I'm so <laughs> glad because people are finally starting to realise that you are a nonce. Like, because last week when you started going on your rant about electric cars being pointless, people thank God the EV army came and backed me up. Oh, I'm fed up with them. And we're like, Tony, you're now starting to sound ridiculous. And you're about to sound ridiculous again with no, this no, extreme no, no, no. E thing. I'm not. I just weren't interested in it. Do I you watch the Dakar rally? No. Exactly. So why would you be interested in Extreme E? Correct. Exactly. So stop going on, because I know you're coming at it from like, oh, these EVs, they were so boring. <laughs> but you just don't like watching off-road rallies. That's not what you watch. So why are you suddenly like going to like it if there's EVs? No, no, no. I like watching Rally Cross. I'm sorry. It, okay, Rally Cross, fine. Love that. Extreme E was exciting. <laughs> and before... Really? Yes. I mean, Did I you mean... see Katie Munnings? She finished her lap with a blown out tyre. No, I didn't see that bit. Um, well, I'd probably turned it off by then. Point proven. <laughs> and for us nerds... Oh, no. It was Rosberg versus Hamilton at the front. How it, cool was that? And Button was there like fourth or fifth. It was like going back to old F1 days. But they weren't in the cars. No, but it's their teams. This is the future, you know, for, hey, Hamilton can't be around that much longer. And to have his teams and Rosberg... Get in the car? No, he's not going to get in the car, but no. as team owners, to have their names, like it was Rosberg versus Hamilton. Like we saw, okay. And still with iconic drivers from all around the world, whether it was, I like the fact it was men and women. I, I thought that Hamilton, was cool. Hamilton fall asleep in that car. The only <laughs> so thing is, 65 mile an hour. Hamilton was pretty quiet about it on social media. I was so surprised about it. But mate, it's off road. Like, you, like yeah, yeah. you are going to sound like a nonce again. Good. And people are going to rip you apart. You know what made me laugh? I'll tell you another thing that made me laugh in a couple of the comments. Because you know, I used an example with my van about EVs. I said, I've done 
three thousand miles in two and a half weeks, and a couple of people have worked out the fact that oh, that's hundred and fifty miles a day. But I don't just do a hundred and fifty miles a day. Some days I do five hundred. Some days I do twenty. Uh, you know, an EV for me is no good at the moment. That, that's all I'm saying. And it's why I don't like them, and it's why I'll buy one. When I need one, or when I have to in 2030. <laughs> to save you from more grief. Let's not go over the <laughs> same points like again. Me, they? No, but <laughs> I think what they don't like, which is what I also get frustrated by, <laughs> it is your refusal to be open minded. Because I totally agree with a lot of your points. And we've had this discussion many times before. Currently, for me and EV Army, I get that you're going to say that we're wrong infrastructure is not quite good enough. That's purely how we feel. We're allowed that opinion. But I am open to the possibility of EV cars, not as an everlasting future, all cars should go electric, but the experience, I've had good and enjoyable experiences and I'm open to it. Like I'm open That's to learning. I have had good experiences. Ty- Taycan, both Taycan experiences. Okay, the rear-wheel drive wasn't for me, but the 4S, mega. I enjoyed the, uh, what was the little, ele- oh, well, Twizzy. Um, but no, I've driven another little electric car recently. Tesla I hated. Sorry, Tesla fans. Uh, e-tron I couldn't charge anywhere, but I really liked the e-tron itself. Formula E, I enjoy watching. <laughs> um, but to just kind of, because I say, we're, we're really repeating ourselves here and we're opening ourselves up to a lot of criticism an from the EV again. army. Well, that happens every week. <laughs> I watched a really good Netflix documentary at the weekend. Yeah. Sea Spiracy. Have you okay. heard about this? No, no. Do you eat a lot of fish? You love it. You love fish. Mm, I, had a, I had a tempori prawn sandwich the other day. I recommend <laughs> it very highly. <laughs> and I had it with Japanese bread. It was beautiful. <laughs> no, true. Watch this documentary. You okay. will never eat fish. Well, actually, you will eat fish because you're a dick. But <laughs> um, <laughs> essentially, it's a really good, really good documentary looking at, uh, you know, well, life of the oceans and, and how the fishing trade is potentially being causing some of the most damage to our climate. Mm-hmm. It's really, really interesting. It's only an hour and a half. I'm sure you can survive it. But the big thing was the whole sort of the bit that I took away from this documentary was that there are so many companies, corporations, politicians out there that hide some of the real issues in this world. They find scapegoats for climate control. Of course they and do. And they target them. So, for example, wouldn't you agree that a lot of the sort of messaging around saving the oceans has been around plastic straws, plastic bottles. In my head, the issues plastic with the bags. oceans, plastic bags. Mm. The, our oceans are being rude. This documentary suggests that actually the biggest issue, and there's so much data in it, is commercial fishing. Mm-hmm. And it got me thinking, something that I'm pretty sure Harry Metcalf points out quite regularly, about container ships. We've obviously had this hilarious Suez Canal situation. The stat that never gets brought up by politicians or campaigning bodies or anywhere is how polluting container ships are. All right, so there's two reasons for that. Of course. One one is always money. Unfortunately, these countries are run on money and that's the it's the root of all evil. 100%. In the whole world that it, you know money yep. is is a drive whether whether you've you've got enough or too much or not enough, sorry, it always causes problems, money. But but it is the, what makes the world go around. Secondly, how do you suggest they get all this stuff around? Well, this is the whole point. Is the reason no one talks about it, the reason it's not on anyone's agenda, is if the whole world became aware or or decided to sort of attack how polluting container ships are, the world would fall apart. Yeah, that is how commerce is traded across the world. That's how cars get shipped from Japan to the UK for us to drive. So these EV cars, which they're talking about, have to come on these container ships that are more polluting than all the cars in the world. Correct. And and as well, we're not going to get into it, but but an EV car is really polluting to make. And the electricity to charge it. So there's the reason that I think we get frustrated is that there's a lot of this kind of stuff going on. And we are fortunate to be in a position where we receive a ton of information from you incredible listeners, mm. from the jobs that we do. Yeah. We often hear amazing stories, an amazing amount of information from loads of different sources. And we can gather that. And we try and sometimes share that with you, but we often get caught <laughs> up in our own emotions. Um, but this, yeah, the reason that we keep harking on saying EV is not the future is that there are many other issues going on here within the automotive sector, but also the world. Yeah. And to simply say combustion engines are the biggest issue we've got that's what we've got to get rid of that's how we're going to save the planet is mad mm. 
And so that's going to become quite evident quite quickly when we will end up having to drive EVs by 2030 here in the UK or sorry, buying EVs by 2030 here in the UK. And someone goes, oh, this has not really fixed anything. You know what we need to do as well? Not today, but we're going to have to do an episode on what we think combustion engine cars will be worth in 2030. As in, you know, when electric cars take over, would they be worth, would they be worth more? Would they be worth less? You know, all these people that have squirreled away all these collectors cars these combustion engine cars is it going to cost 25 quid a gallon of fuel because is that how the government are going to get their money uh we need to do some research into that because we have to really delve in but th- that's an episode that is well two things firstly i'm glad you said that because i thought you can say like march on parliament for some reason <laughs> <laughs> we need to get a well, petition we've got 40, to get some followers we can do that <laughs> <laughs> but secondly well now because we are moving into the next phase of restrictions here in the uk mm. We're going to start having guests. Yeah, yeah. Our long plan thing for season four to bring guests into the mm. studio. That's going to start happening now, the weeks ahead. And I've got a couple lined up that could st- talk on this that are specialists in either car collecting or 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 um, classic cars. And, and I want to ask them, like, what do they think about this future? Mm. Are they sitting there going, God, we're going to, prices are going to skyrocket or they're going to fall. So maybe that's what we need to bring in a couple of experts to mm. join us. Because you're right. It's a good episode topic. The, uh, uh, at the moment, if I'm honest, from where I'm sitting... I don't think anyone knows at the moment, mate. It's all speculation. It's all a little bit speculation. The thing is, we get a collector in, they're going to say, yeah, it'll be fine, that's why I'm going to keep buying them. (laughs) They don't really know, so we've got to be a little bit careful. Well, but we can pick them apart. Wait, well, we're going on them. Yeah, go in on them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Make them really welcome. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, another teaser there that, um, you know, hopefully over the weeks ahead, uh, some guests will be joining us for a few episodes to chat about different things. Uh, and that's a, that's a good idea. But let's move on because we got a bit controversial and politi- political then again, um, to something completely random, because last week was April Fool's Day. And we had, like every year, a few automotive manufacturers coming along and trying to make some April Fool's jokes. Well, you fell for a couple. Well, I, actually, I was actually involved in one. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you fell for one then? So No, I didn't fall for either. What did you think I fell for? Well, didn't you, didn't you, didn't you um, repost a couple of stories? There's the Porsche one. Yeah. Yeah, I was in on it with Porsche. Oh, okay. So fair. Porsche approached me last, a, okay, a week good. ago, and said, hey, they were doing this for an April Fool's. Would you mind helping us and supporting us? Mm. Obviously, pretty painful because <laughs> I think it was evident to everyone it was a really fun and really cool and really elaborate April Fool's. Yeah, yeah. And my DMs were literally full of people being like, you're an idiot. And I couldn't go back and say anything. So <laughs> I had to wait for Porsche to be like, thanks to at Seen Through Glass as well for, you know, helping us, uh, helping us share this. So I was like, cheers, Porsche. Uh, but I was in on it. So what was the other one you thought I was? Uh... Uh, well, someone else posted something else. I thought it was you, but no. uh, someone else posted something else, which, which I don't know, again, whether it was, whether they was meant to do it or whether okay. they'd just been had. Well, let's, oh, and this is the world that we live in nowadays that you just don't know who to trust on April Fool's oh, Day. Absolutely. So I thought we'd just review a few of the ones that came out because they, they were quite good, um, but there was one that was an absolute royal F up, um, <laughs> which that we need to talk about. So the Porsche one very quickly, uh, the, the fool was that they were releasing patina paint to sample. So yeah. you could order this sort of special oxidizing paint, which essentially when you left the dealership, <laughs> turned to rust to give your car that kind of retro old school feel. I actually quite like the idea. Like yeah. I genuinely was like, I think I would get this. <laughs> and worryingly, I know a few other people who also quite liked it, uh, but it was a bit of fun and very elaborate from Porsche. They went all in, Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a good fun one. So here we go. Uh, Caterham, Caterham released uh, seven lube. It's not a joke. It was making, it was lube to, make getting in and out of a Caterham 7 easier than ever before. So essentially they were saying, if you struggle, if you're too big to fit in a Caterham, you could buy anyway. this special lube and it would you'd just slip straight in. <laughs> I mean, good on them. Why not? Seven lube. Get you from standing to the driving seat in less than 1.3 seconds. <laughs> Where'd you get out? I'd, God knows. <laughs> slip, slip down through the floor, well, I suppose. Get to seat. Now, one April Fool's that I was so overly excited about and then really disappointed to find out wasn't true from Bentley. Did you see this? No. Cappuccino with your Continental. They talked about having a coffee maker inside a Continental GT. Did they really? One of my favourite cars of all time. Like That is my Euro Millions cars. I would spec a brown on brown Continental GT. A brown on brown? Brown on brown. I'm, brown is the new black, bro. Brown on brown Continental GT. The day I won Euro Millions, that's the car I'd spec. Would you really? Yeah, because like just to waft. It's a very good car there, actually. So there. good. And yeah. the thought of having a coffee maker inside, I mean, like, dream. <laughs> oh, so I was very upset. You put your somewhere. coffee in it. Well, I go, go. Uh, <laughs> get some SCG coffee in there. 
Um, Alfa Romeo had quite a funny one. They were talking about having filters on their windows, like Instagram filters almost, that made it look like, or made you feel like you were in Italy or parts of Italy. So in the Stelvia, you could, you know, have these filters on your window and you go, oh, it's a beautiful day, la dolce vita, even if you were in Birmingham. So, yeah. um, you know, that, that was quite a funny one, I thought. Um, and then, of course, we have to talk about the disaster that was Volkswagen. Okay. Did you see this? No. Oh, how did you miss this? I didn't. Uh, what? When was April Fool's Day? I know. What, Surprisingly, on the first of April. No, 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 no. But what was it? Was it Friday? Thursday. No, it wasn't Thursday. Thursday. Was it Thursday? Thursday. Yeah. Thursday was the April Fool's Day. What were you doing? I was busy at work. Fair enough. So there you go. I didn't really look on social media. Well, interestingly, this actually happened. Uh, I think two days earlier, or at least a day earlier. So on Tuesday or Wednesday, and I, I lose track. There was a huge press release that came out saying that in America. Volkswagen were changing the name to Volkswagen to try and help change their identity around obviously their electric products. Mm -hmm. So ID4 mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. This was a whole new rebranding. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, no. They're like, yeah. To the point where everyone was like, this isn't an April Fool's, is it? And they were like, it's not an April Fool's. This is definitely happening. Like there were news, it was all over BBC News. Like it was everywhere. Everywhere. Oh my God. And then on the First of April, they had to come up saying, oh no, it wasn't April Fool's, we just sent it out the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's been sacked. I mean, literally, it was, so on Tuesday night, the third, two days early, they released this ridiculous April Fool's, which they had to say wasn't an April Fool's until April Fool's Day when they had to admit it was an April Fool's. Oh, someone's It ran trouble. everywhere. Like it ran everywhere. Yeah. What a disaster, uh, that right? That is a full on disaster. Volts. Vargan. Yeah. I mean, come on. So a prime example there are some very funny ones that were very obviously jokes. Yeah. Some pretty good ones which I was upset with jokes, i.e. coffee maker in the Continental. And then just <laughs> disastrous PR blunders yeah, yeah. in the vaults Vargan thing. Someone someone's genuinely gonna got sacked for that, right? Oh, I would hope so. <laughs> it's not an individual, it's gotta be an agency because yeah, absolute nightmare. Um but you know, I guess it's at least good to see that manufacturers are still trying to have a bit of fun yeah. in this bleak old world that we live in. <laughs> um, anyway, let's come on to our sort of top story of the day. And I have to once again thank Autocar. Like we do sometimes, well, we actually quite regularly use Autocar stories for topics on this podcast. Yeah. And I feel like I should give them more shout outs. It's probably not very fair that we kind of nick some of their articles mm. to use as topics, but very all credit to you, Autocar. Brilliant, yeah, yeah. brilliant topics here and there. And this one was useful because last week we spoke about when was potentially the best era of supercars. And our immediate thought and a lot of the comments were potentially around the sort of 2010s. Yeah. You yeah. know, like late noughties, early 10s. Yep. Uh, and funny enough, then Autocar came out with an article uh, last, actually, no, over the weekend, the best pre-2010 cars to buy, used so cars to buy. Cars. <laughs> maybe, maybe, the, <laughs> hey, maybe that's it. Maybe they're listening to us. Oh, so I was, like, I was like, oh, cool, yeah, let's yeah. see what they suggest. But in classic autocar form, <laughs> oh, no. the suggestions are debatable. Oh. <laughs> so uh, this is, you know, okay, so ready to take the plunge, but not yet certain what to buy. By targeting pre-2010 cars, you can get the best of all worlds. Value, relative simplicity and future classic potential. Mm. Now, I'm like, okay, there could be anything in this until I see future classic potential. I'm thinking, oh, cool. Like this will be quirky bits, 430 scooter ears and I don't know, what else? Mm. Some other stuff. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, let's just launch into it because they're, you know, it starts off strong. Fair. Ford Focus RS. Mark II. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bulbous. They're saying they've got one uh, 60,000 miles, 2010 car. £22,000. Yeah, I was going to say, is that 20000 quid still? I haven't lost any money in them cars. I wouldn't say future classic. I'd say classic right now. Mm, modern modern classic for modern sure. Modern classic. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. super cool looking. Three door. Yeah. We don't get three door hatchbacks anymore, apart from uh, the super minis. Yeah. So all for that. Looks brute. Looks like a brute. Looks uh, mean. And the Yaris GL. And the Yaris GL. So <laughs> but is that a super? Because what would you say? The Yaris is a hatchback or a super mini? No, it's a, it's a hot hatch, isn't it? It's still a hot hatch. Okay. It's just weird, that Yaris, because it like, doesn't behave like a hot hatch. That's like completely different. And we have to call it the GR Yaris because it's completely different to the regular Yaris. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Focus RS. So, you know, I think that's a good shout. Yeah, me like, too. I look at those sometimes in a non Larry Wayne Rooney spec and mm. think, that's a nice bit of kit. Yeah, the biggest problem I have with all them modern classic stuffs, and you found out first damn before, is that the money they cost to maintain but repair bills. Even stuff. a Focus? 
Um, well, they have their problems. Uh, all oh, cars do. Sure. Yeah, yeah, they have their problems. And as they go up in the miles, they start, things start to wear out. So, and unfortunately, because it's a machine, you don't just have, when you get to a car that's 60, 70, 80,000 miles, everything around it's 60, 70, 80,000 miles. So everything wears out all at the same time. So if everything's been done, then you're good to go again, essentially. Sure. But, but yeah. Potential money pits. Yeah. I, I think definitely all modern classics are, are money pits. There will definitely be some stuff I would suggest from Asia that holds up a little bit better than some of the European stuff. Fair. Uh, that would just be my shout. Yeah. Anyway. So we, I'm like, okay, this is a good list order car. Yeah. I'm feeling positive about this. There's going to be tons for us to discuss. We come on to the second car. <laughs> well, Focus RS is a good one. I agree. Uh, yeah. Number two, Vauxhall Insignia. What? <laughs> Future classic potential. Well, then, so the Cavalier is a classic, then. I mean, what? where have they got that from? I'm I mean, they're mate, looking at this being like, what? A, a, like, what? A, two, a pre-2010 Vauxhall Insignia is scrap. <laughs> it's not, honestly, mate, it's not worth anything. What would have been the fruitiest? The VXR, they must VXR, have done it. VXR. Which was a rival to what, an S4 or an... Uh, 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 yeah. Like something the, like that? Yeah, yeah. Like, a, like, oh, my God, who buys it? <laughs> Honestly. But is it? Because I, I have no experience with these cars. So I genuinely well, am like. Do I like, like <laughs> because I think any, if you're cho choosing Vox or you're choosing VXR, like you're a bit out there anyway. Like you're doing things differently. But I don't look back at that. Not like a, what was the crazy Australian, the Monaro, for example. Yeah, yeah. I don't look at an insignia VXR and go, oh, that's a, that's a, like a Volvo. Uh, 850R. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's not that, is it? No, no, no. It's no, just no. an It's a disaster of a car. I thought that was, a, when I was scrolling out oh doing my, my research, I was like, oh, oh, we could be going down a very familiar path I mean, they'll do some well. of Autocar's list. Yeah, they will, Autocar will do well to find a 2009 Insignia that's not in a scrapyard. <laughs> Honestly, mate, they're, like literally, it's not, that's not worth it's anything. It's not a thing, right? No, yeah. no, 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 scrap. So, you know. Sorry if you own one. Sorry if you own <laughs> one. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I someone feel free to, Tell us why that's a potential future classic because we were both looking at it going, no. Never. Never. Okay. So, so, this, so, you're going to start to figure out why, why I'm laughing. <laughs> Next up on the list, are you ready? Audi, oh, A2. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, if you've never seen an A2 before, it, how, it's like a bubble car, right? It's like a sit up and beg car. It's, it's what we call a sit up and beg car. Sit up and beg. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 because it's, it's built for people that, you know, it's like a Nissan Note. Like you, you sort of climb into it more than. I see, okay, rather than sit into it. Yeah. So I would look at, for example, TT Quattro. Remember the, the Sport Quattro ones, the one with the kind of bucket seats from the uh, TTR or the. Yeah, multi spoke the wheels. Multi spoke wheels. That's a modern classic. That's car, a modern that. classic. That's Very a cool. Good. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're still affordable. 200 horsepower. They've got were. something a bit more special. Yeah. Like, that's I had a cool a few car. Of them. Did you? Oh, yeah, I had a few of them in stock. Yeah, back I see in the them come and go every now and again. Mm. You just don't find them very often in, in good condition as well. They're really Alcantara nice. Alcantara Steam or they Exactly. Yeah, Got yeah. all the nice options. Yeah. I'd put that on the list. The A2, here's Autocar's justification. A cruel glimpse of a future we never got. <laughs> Thank God. This Super Mini will look cool forever. Debatable. The issue that everyone talks about is that its aluminum body is expensive to fix. The diesel engine will deliver more than 60 mpg, but the perky 1.6 litre is the best all-rounder. Prices will continue to follow a gentle upwards trajectory if the mileage is reasonable. Absolutely no <laughs> chance. Again, that car, because of the way it was made... It's the reason why Audi stopped making it anyway, because it was a fault. No one bought them. It was a fortune to make, and... Um, again, it's scrap. In it's the scrap bin. Car. Wasn't yeah. even an S version. No. I mean, I don't want to be, maybe we're being a bit harsh. Doing it, you know. These are all kind of fine. Like, they're a budget. Like, I, I get it. They're the, not modern the reason that we're though, atar Yeah, that's the reason we're going yeah. in on this. The reason we're going in on this slightly, because some of these picks are genius. Some of them are very questionable. Is that fact that in the headline of this piece, it's saying the, bre the best pre-2010 used cars that are future classic potentials. That's where I'm going, no. No. 
hey, it's a great car if you need like a relatively cheap Audi to like, I guess. Anyway, let's move on. No. <laughs> if you want a relatively cheap Audi, buy an older A4 or an A3. <laughs> I would agree with you there. Now, next up on the list, they've smashed it with this one, Lotus Evora. Don't care what you're going to say. No, no. Because you can get early Evora sub 30K. Yeah, yeah. As my experience last summer told me, Evora is a brilliant, usable Lotus. It's so much experience, so much rawness that we now know that Lotus aren't making the Evora anymore. Mm -hmm. So you're buying a piece of Lotus history. Always a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Look at previous Lotus models. And just cool for like sub 30K. I mean, I guess you could go and get a 4C, but I don't think it's got as much about it as a... Yeah, I mean, you could put an Exige in there as well. I'm sure. Um, You know, like pre-2010. I mean, they've held their money, mate. They're still 20-odd grand, I would think. Naturally aspirated. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Were the early ones all naturally aspirated. Well, I know the Exige definitely. They of course, supercharged one. Right? Supercharged one. Yeah. 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 Anyway, well, <laughs> okay, we, we messed up with our credibility there a bit. But anyway, <laughs> go buy an Evora. <laughs> um, so next up on the list, Volvo V70. Uh, is that the, the, the just Volvo V70? It's a station wagon from two thousand and nine. No, I mean the thing is, you say no. I mean, sure, like nice car. I wouldn't have picked it from all the cars made pre twenty tens as like one to go like oh, okay. It's a nice Volvo wagon. Yeah, like. I mean it go on forever. So for that reason it might be a modern class. I mean they they're It will buck the trend of what you said of them all falling apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but what was that one that you had? Uh, that one that- I had nineteen ninety nine. Okay, fair. V seventy again, but yeah. totally different era and shape. This yeah, 10 I mean years they later. will it will just Great, know, great car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think it just a generic V70 is a future classic. No. Not, no chance. I don't even know how they managed to compile this list. Maybe we're reading it wrong. Maybe Autocar is saying, here are a load of really nice cars from pre-2010. Some of them might be future classics. Maybe. But the list is all over the shop. Because you, how do you go from Evora to Volvo V70? All right, so so we've had five, haven't we? We've had five and two we Keeps agree going. with. Now, this is one that I actually would buy. Volkswagen. Polo. Yeah. June Cross. Uh, yeah, that's the one with the plastic bumpers. And all so that it's lot. basically like, yeah, you know, yeah. like an A4 all road or yeah, an yeah. A6 all road. In a polo. But in a polo. Yeah. <laughs> and for so, it's like a Panda 4x4. Remember those Correct. old Panda 4 Yeah, yeah. That's what it's like, but for a polo. And yeah. I'm like, I'm all for this. Yeah, yeah. I would literally put some fog lights on that or some spotlights on the roof. And and take it around the UK. That could be one, actually, to be fair. I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, weird, but... I don't know how much it's going to be worth. I'm not sure I've ever seen one on the road. Uh, No, I've seen... You've seen a few? Yeah, yeah, I've seen a few. Um, I don't know if it's going to be worth a fortune, but... Yeah, okay. But I I mean, like, well done, because quirky. And quirky's good. Like, you know, Panda Mm. 4x4 right now is so hot. Mm. I wouldn't have even thought of that June thing. I didn't know it existed. No, no, no. Until I looked at this list. So, next up, Mini Clubman. I mean, I absolutely adored my experience with the Clubman. Thought it was great. We we'll still make that now. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> not, not so sure that. I mean, no, no, that's not. Not. I no. Mean, Alfa Romeo one five nine sport wagon. Yeah, that is. I would put that right in there because that's an Alfa station wagon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think life doesn't get much better, does it? And you know what? I'll tell you something about one of them. They are still a few quid, them cars. So they've listed one here that they found for seven grand. Yeah. It's 54k miles, seven grand with a 2.4 litre. Um, I mean, but yeah, I mean, just so cool. Yeah, yeah. Alpha station wagon. Go for it. Again, so this is what I mean. Like they've had, they've picked up some real gems here and then really let themselves down in other areas. I mean, it's only done 54,000 miles because it's been broken most of this time. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's probably true. It's I'm not going to. I'm not going to go in on you on that one. A huge electrical problem. I'll let you have that one. Yeah. Next up, Saab nine five. Yeah. I have never experienced a Saab in my life. Yeah, we've had a few actually. To be uh, honest, there, I mean thoughts. Well, it's like a Volvo, mate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Yeah, yeah. They're just a, a modern classic. A cup, I don't know whether that one would be, but. They're definitely a good car. Sure. Very good. But Very good, but... Built properly. Like they, Volvo. They, they last for a long time. They last built- for a long time, okay. yeah. I don't know if you can still fix them, but... And I guess it's a bit quirky, a bit out there. Yeah, yeah. Probably a fruity... Let's see if it talks about versions. Uh, 
the last gasp sob. Okay, so this was the final sob. That's kind of cool mm. from that point of view. They used to say that um, sob customers were the best educated customers of any manufacturer. They'd all buy sobs. I love the, what was the old box? Like, is it Saab Turbo? Yeah. Like, obsessed. Is it the 900? I think so. Yeah. You know, the iconic shape with the, yeah, almost yeah, yeah. like the yeah, shot. Yeah, the 900, 900 like, Turbo, yeah. Super cool. Yeah. The more modern stuff, not really my bag. But, yeah. you know, I guess if you're having the last hurrah, why not? That's yeah. probably, it's a thing. Um, no, <laughs> no, this one. Porsche 911. Sure. <laughs> okay, agreed. Why not? No, why, no, why not? I mean, 997 like, or 996. This one, nine, they're doing 2003, so 996. Yeah, I mean, that is, well, I mean, we know about it. Sure, that. I mean, we know about that. <laughs> Don't you dare start to be mean about the car downstairs. <laughs> oh, you still got it. Still got it. What do you mean, still got it? <laughs> Next up, it. Audi TTS. Agreed. I owned one. Mm. Brilliant car. So much, but like people still go for the whole hairdresser thing. I don't care if no, you're no. like such a good car, the TTS. Mm. Um, love that thing. My and you forget, what? mate. I mean, that 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 was like 2008, 2009. And you know, if you drive one of them cars, that's still because you got wait, wait, you got yeah, you got a DSG gearbox, yep. then. yeah, 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 absolutely. Still drives like a modern car, that car, so good, really mate. good, so so yeah, good. Yeah. You got all the music you need and everything like that. Yeah. And like, oh, it's super quick, sounds really good, yeah, yeah. I love those things. Absolutely love those things. Um, I'm just going to pile through a couple of another weird ones. Toyota Land Cruiser. Sure. Okay. Fine. Jaguar XJ. Sure. Fine. Weird to put them on the list, but okay. Land Cruiser possibly. Sure. But would you say that that generation of Land Cruiser was the ultimate generation of Land Cruiser? Mm, no, probably not. Probably not. No. Yeah. Perfectly good. Won't go wrong. Sure. Yeah. I mean, cool. Might as yeah. well just put... I don't know. Golf on there. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put any cars yeah, on there at this point. Yeah. Now, Jaguar XK convertible. Not sure why they've chosen the convertible, but I still. We've said this a few times before. The XK is actually one to watch. Oh, that that XKR. So that five liter supercharged car. They've done the four point two before. Yeah. But that five liter supercharged car. That's a really good car. That really good car. Really good. We mentioned it. Sometimes it gets overlooked. Held its money pretty well. 25,000 quid probably still for yep. a one with low mileage. I bet they are. Are they? Uh, yeah, the one they've got here is, yeah, the 5 litre V8 portfolio. Yeah. 25 grand for yeah. 42k miles. Yeah. You know, but, but you know, you can go there, you can step up to an RS, RS, GT, all these different yeah, variants. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're doing well, beautiful shape, beautiful lines, yeah. great engine, which is fundamentally F-type engine. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah really, really good mm-hmm. cars. So we're all for that. We're all for that. That great noise they did. Yeah. Oh. It's elegant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, just seeing if there's... Because, I mean, there are just some bizarre picks. But we'll then come down to the finishing point where they finish with well, considering where they started, because we're back with Vauxhall, and it is the Monaro, the one that I mentioned, of course, yeah. essentially the Australian big hunking V8-derived version, 2005. The Holden. The Holden, there you go, thank you. Yeah. 5.7 litre V8. 15 grand for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Jump on that. Three door, essentially. Mm-hmm. What a what a cool, yeah, yeah. quirky, out there, different car. They don't get money as well, because I bet you could be, I bet back in the day you'd buy a new one for 25 grand. A, a super rare, mm. definite future classic. Yeah. And something so quirky that people would be like, oh, what's that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Tell me what was that. It's got a V8 on oh, mm. nice. That's the kind of stuff which, that's what, sh- not Volvos and Land Cruisers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't really know where they uh, you know, at w- w- what perimeters they've no. done their list at. No one does. No. <laughs> well, they do. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, but anyway, so here's an interesting one. Off the back of that episode, I think, you know, lots of other cars that we probably would have considered personally, mm. but uh, useful anyway to go back and look at it. And it's an era that I love. Mm-hmm. Most of those cars I wouldn't have considered or thought about, but now I do want a Polo June, whatever it's called, June something. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to go theoretically green leaning on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, that will bring an end to today's episode. Um, as I say, it's been an exciting few days and there's an exciting few weeks ahead for us. Guess we're now finally starting to line up. We teased upcoming road trip. Oh, hello. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and various other bits and bobs that are happening, which just makes me feel a bit happy about life. I'm going to yeah, be honest. the sun's out. The sun's out yeah. and guns are out. It's cold though. It is cold today. There's no guns out. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, mate? You looked over here. <laughs> you looked over here. Anyway, uh, if you want to follow Tony, he's at Tony Gravelwood Car Sales on pretty much most social media platforms. I'm at Seen Through Glass. Uh, and we'll be back with you next week for another episode. Bye-bye. See you